Hey guys, how's it going? It's Ollie here from Cryptovest.com. It is the 4th of January today and we're going to be looking at Zilliqa trading against Bitcoin over one day candles. Uh, the crypto markets had a bit of a correction today. Uh, a vast majority of the, the market seems to be in the red at the moment. A few coins are kind of standing out, uh, particularly in the top 50, are sort of decoupling away from this current bear market. Uh, Ethereum seems to be leading the pack again. Uh, we've got Maker, Tron, and interesting Zilliqa kind of stood out as well. It's It's been a coin that's kind of been oscillating in the lower part of its range for a long time now. Uh, but it's up at around 1.16 against the US dollar and up at around 2.65 against BTC, which is still hovering around that $3,800 mark right now. So starting to sort of look like something's picking up behind it. And interestingly, Zilliqa's mainnet is due to launch at the end of the month on the 31st of January. So it'll be migrating onto its own blockchain, token migration across. Um, so usually when we see these projects have their migrations onto mainnets, uh, there's a lot more bullish activity. We can see bull runs happening prior to the uh, the upgrade going live. Um, so maybe this is the start of that. Maybe it's not. Um, but it's interesting to see this particular currency moving. So um, I'm just going to have a look at it right now. Uh, and as you can see, uh, it's kind of it's kind of been oscillating in the sort of main range now for a long time between the sort of uh, 675 sats uh, resistance at the top here, which is a sort of key level going back as far as uh, March earlier in last year. Uh, and then there's sort of a well-established bottom now uh, around 350 sats, which was uh, the bottom in March uh, and has picked up again very recently on the 25th of November. Um, so this is a kind of the main range that it sort of oscillates in. You can see all the way since August it's been sort of doing it in here. Um, but then there's also is inside there's some other sort of key support resistances that it's actually been tracking very faithfully to. Uh, and right now I just highlight the main range it's in again at the moment. And this was a particularly key area, particularly going through uh, September into November, so two months we were sort of very tightly uh, working between these two levels and then we broke bearish. Uh, we had this kind of Adam and Eve pattern, it's a bit of an optimistic Adam and Eve pattern here, as you can see it was a bit of a bearish spike, uh, retraced back to one of two necklines and then we had this nice parabolic Eve sort of part of the pattern, um, retraced the neckline and then it started to push on from here. Um, you could even argue that it was a, a bit of a cup and handle pattern, in fact if we look at it a bit more closely you can see uh, let's get rid of that. Let's draw it on. You can see we've almost got can wicks of the candles kind of met at the top here around the sort of 500 sats level. And then we kind of had this parabolic and then this little handle here. And then it pushed on from here. We're currently correcting from the first phase. So um, we're sort of waiting to see where it goes from here. But there's some positive signs that it can push on from here. Obviously, the first resistance will be at the sort of 577 sats uh, resistance here. It's a very, very key level, obviously. Uh, it's held us down very recently on the 29th of December, but obviously it was very, very difficult to break above um, going particularly through October. So it'll be interesting to see how the current bullish momentum can pick up and whether it will push on from here or whether we'll see it ricochet and then push down again and sort of oscillate in the sort of lower range. But overall, some promising signs on the Ishimoku, on the one-day Ishimoku. You can see it's broken through the resisting Kumo cloud, which is obviously a very positive bullish reversal signal. And we've got a very good uh, Tenkan Sen, Kijun Sen crossover here. Uh, so that's all looking very, very promising, provided that we stay above the cloud here. We've got supporting Kumo now starting to appear. Um, so as long as we stay above that, it's good. If we dip below it, obviously, it'll be a sign of a bearish reversal. So we'd like to see the asset continue climbing higher from here. And then we've also got um, the 100 moving average, which the price action has now recently climbed above, particularly on the sort of 28th of December, just as we are reaching that sort of end of year close. Um, it has managed to push on from here. So we're now above that for the first time. Uh, since sort of July time. So that's overall some promising things that momentum is starting to pick up. Perhaps all the bearish traders in this market have now fizzled out and bulls are now starting to re-enter this market ahead of the migration. Um, if we look at some momentum indicators as well, you can see some other positive signs. Uh, let's have a look at the Chaikin Money Flow Indicator as well. Bit of a correction on the Chaikin Money Flow Indicator and you can see it's kind of hovering flat at the moment. Um, it doesn't seem to be a clear sign that either bullish or uh, Buying pressure or selling pressure is winning right now, so it's kind of hovering flat, a little bit below the zero line. Um, so we'd like to see that indicator line push through and sort of start spiking up a little bit. But on the RSI, it's looking fairly promising, as you can see, briefly oversold on two occasions in the last two weeks. Um, it's now started to come back down, correct, but as you can see, now starting to spike up again um, towards that region. So we're now at around 62%. So still, you know, oscillating in the higher part of the range, so it's looking pretty good. Uh, and then as again on the MACD indicator. The 12 MA is still high above the 26 MA. We're above the signal line now uh, for the first time since November, but really high above the signal line for the first time in a long time, really, going back as far as wherever this sort of ends up, uh, the same March. So uh, looking pretty good, although buying candles on the histogram are showing a decline. So we may see 
this 12 may start to dip below if the correction continues. Um, we just have to keep an eye on that. But it's a lagging indicator, so it'll be a little bit behind the price action going forward. Um, so yeah, looking kind of interesting. It'll be nice to see this asset pick up a little bit more. Uh, it's definitely something to keep an eye out for. Potentially got this Elliott Wave thing going on, um, where we're at sort of correction phase two now. We're looking for that third impulse wave to kick us off. Um, the top range for this obviously be the 675 um, sats resistance, which is obviously a very key level for Zillica. Uh, and if it breaks above that, then obviously we can start looking at new price targets and it'll, it'll be a very very promising sign if Zillica is able to break above this very key level uh, and then we can start looking at things further above and maybe pull in this uh, the mad pump it had when it was released on Binance um, so we can start looking at some areas along here so yeah overall uh, good project it's got a lot to look forward to at the end of this month uh, so it'll be interesting to see how well this performs uh, going into the next couple of weeks let me know what you think of it guys in the comment section below uh, and please check out the full TA at CryptoVest.com nice one thank you